This is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by one of the stars of The End of the Tour, Jason Siegel. Um, I want to start off by probably a general question, which I'm sure you've a answered a million times, sure. but I was kind of curious as to your interest in doing this film. Was it based on the opportunity to play someone like David Foster Wallace? Was it the specific project that people... Yeah. Because I just want to say, quick side note, um, I'm a huge fan of your dramatic work. Oh, thanks. And so, particularly Jeff, who lives at home. Thanks. Um, so I was really excited to see you take on another dramatic project, and I was kind of just curious what made you decide to do those when you do them, essentially. <laughs> And I mean, you could. Yeah. Do it. Well, no, it's a really good question. It, it's a there's like a complicated answer to it, but I think that Jeff, who lives at home, was a few years ago too, and it was it was starting. Uh, you know, as you get older, you think about different stuff. It's really as simple as that. And I think in my in my twenties, um, something like forgetting Sarah Marshall was really reflective of where I was at a sure. time. Um, and I think as I've been getting older, I've just been thinking about different stuff. And when I got this script, it was really almost spot on um, pertinent to what I was going through at, at the time uh, and continue to, yeah. which is, you know, sort of uh, in a transitional moment life-wise where the TV show yeah. that I was on for a decade was coming to an end. I had started to feel a gap between the comedy I was doing and what I was thinking about away from work. Sure. And so um, I was at this moment that really, there's a line in the script that really resonated with me where he said, I have to face the reality that right now I'm 34 years old alone in a room with a piece of paper. And that that is exactly how I felt when I was reading the script. I felt like I was at a moment where my safety net, my comfort zone was kind of gone and I need to figure out what I'm going to do. You, you bring up a really interesting thing that I was, I was intending to ask you anyway, which is, what is it like sort of playing uh, somebody who's put in the spotlight? Is it sort of something that you yeah. can reflect on yourself as somebody who's, you know, you have a private life, obviously, but you're sure. a very public figure, and it's sort yeah. of like trying to balance those, you know, because I'm sure, you know, you don't want fucking paparazzi on your ass all the time right. or something like that. But at the same time, you realize it comes with the territory. Yeah. And I was just wondering in terms of like, um, if, if it's, it is an internal struggle as somebody who, you know, you want to pursue what you love, you want to pursue things that interest you. But at the same time, there's like these perceptions from the outside public of like, oh, he's the guy who's in the funny movies or he's the guy from that right. TV show and just trying to balance who you are versus the work you do and ultimately what represents you or what you feel yeah. fulfilled by. I think that one of the things as I've gotten older I've realized is other people's perception of me is sort of that is outside of my pay grade. I have no control over that. Sure. I don't, I am not astute enough to know how to manage that. And I've tried and you spend years trying and then you realize like this is exhausting. And at some point, the only person who has to be comfortable with me is me. Oh no, absolutely. And, but that is not something I arrived at until, you know, the past few years. Uh, and, and I think the same comes in work decisions, I'm realizing, is you have to pick things that uh, I want to be afraid, uh, which I hadn't been afraid in a long time. And that was starting to bum me, uh, bum me out, like doing things that you know how to do that you're comfortable with is not a very exciting process. Whereas uh, Freaks and Geeks, I was scared. <laughs> Forgetting Sarah Marshall, I was scared. Muppets, I was scared for certain reasons. And this movie, I was really scared. I was scared the first time they said action. I mean, it's, it's a really interesting project. I will be the first to admit that I was not immensely familiar with David sure. Foster Wallace's work yeah. prior to uh, the film. But obviously, I mean, I'm familiar with him in a general sense. It sounded like you did quite a bit of work to sort of understand him, understand his work prior to this film. Uh, what was that experience like, both in terms of trying to honor him as a figure, but also sort of, as you said, discovering that this did touch upon something that you had felt, but maybe didn't know that there was a sort of parallel with prior to this? Yeah. Well, I, 
one of the things that's great about the movie is is I think what is great about David Foster Wallace's writing is that it, it offers, he, he in his writing offers a surrogate experience where he says for the next thousand pages in Infinite Jest or for the next 10 pages in this essay, I am you. I am you with a vocabulary that you might not have or some insight that you might pay, may not sure. pay attention to. Sure. Um, but he... He represents us, and he's in the thick of it with us. So when you see the movie, you you sort of don't need to know who David Foster Wallace is. It's um, it's you. It's you going through this terrifying moment when you get exactly what you hoped for, and you realize you still feel the same. Which is a, a perfect parallel, actually, if you ask me, um, to the Duplass brothers' work. For instance, yeah. the puffy chair. Like I remember watching that puffy chair. You know, there's that relationship in the movie, and it's like. Wow, I have been in that exact position. That's right. I can tell this is a much more eloquent way of describing that experience I've been through, but um, that's a, that's a powerful thing. Yeah, you read David Foster Wallace. Um, uh, in Infinite Jest, he writes so beautifully about depression, and he says, um, you know, think about the phenomenon of jumping out of a burning building and ask yourself the question, what could be so terrifying that you would choose to jump out of a burning mm-hmm. building? Um, you know, that that would be an escape from the real yeah, pain. Yeah. And you think to yourself, well, I wish I had said that instead of screamed, <laughs> get out of my room. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. he offers us, I think, a, um, he's us with a better vocabulary in the same way that J.D. Salinger was in Catcher in the Rye. It kind of actually reminds me of that episode of Seinfeld where George keeps thinking up the insults like, <laughs> a day after the fact, he's like, yeah. all right, oh yeah, you're from the jerk store or yeah, whatever. So yeah, that's, that's a, right. That's a really awesome thing. What was it like trying to cultivate the chemistry with Jesse Eisenberg, who sort of essentially, it's the two of you really are the driving force of this yeah. movie, and that relationship between David Foster Wallace and was it David Kid? Lip- Lipsky. Lipsky. It was very natural. I got to say, we both, I don't think there is a way to approach this movie that doesn't involve being utterly prepared. Um, you're saying giant chunks of dialogue sure. um, that you need to, one, know really well just to say them, but then also you don't want it to feel like a recitation of smart things. It needs to seem like a conversation. <laughs> Natural, yeah. Yeah, and so I think just a byproduct of that kind of preparation is that we both arrived really very clear on our perspectives. And so when we started acting, it immediately felt like a chess match. (laughs) I feel like a lot of Jesse Eisenberg movies feel that way. Well, there's Um, a real Frost-Nixon element to this movie. Oh, for sure, yeah. There's very subtle sort of moments where you're like, you can tell the gears grinding in different people's minds. Um, Was there any sort of specific preparation you guys did with each other? Did you guys meet prior to this? Or was it one of those things Mm -hmm. that you just both sort of prepared your game, speaking of the chess metaphor, and then just sort of went to... By virtue of the uh, scheduling and I think the nature of the movie, we we had met once before we started shooting, but we we didn't know each other and we <laughs> got to, dove right in. The first scene we shot is the scene where they meet each other for the first time. Seems appropriate. Smart. Yeah. Uh, what was it like working with James Ponsold? He uh, came for, to SIF several years. It was spectacular. Yeah. Now. Amazingly nice guy, very thoughtful filmmaker. What was it like from your perspective getting a chance to work with him? Well, I felt like I was catching um, a genius early on in his career. I feel really, really lucky. You watch his movies and he gets something out of his actors that uh, I think that the actors themselves don't even know they're capable of it. I'm only speaking for myself, but all, you know, the movies smash spectacular now end of tour it's not like there are giant plot movements in these movies they are stories about character growth and he challenges you at every turn to identify the parts of yourself that are in line with the story and to strive for honesty about them that's an interesting question um you're right this film is very much a film of subtleties what is that like working as an actor i mean i feel like my perception as someone who hasn't done it 
you know, on TV or anything, is that comedy is a thing that's really about, you know, over the top, making sure that it's very clear, whereas this is a very subtle thing where it's like a look has to convey an emotion, a look has right. to convey a thought. Is that a challenging departure for you? Is this something you like the challenge of? Was it something, uh, I don't know, what was that like trying to do much more sort of like with physical expressions, perhaps, you know, right. stuff like that? Well, you know, to be honest, that was James's job and he did it so beautifully jesse and my job as i view it was to be was to strive for honesty in all of the scenes and to play them as real as possible when i then saw the movie and saw oh you're on jesse's eyes while i'm saying the thing <laughs> that's why james yeah. is a brilliant director yeah. it's why i haven't tried directing because i see things like that and I'm like oh right it's an actual <laughs> skill and talent yeah. <laughs> it actually takes some yeah, yeah. Talent. Yeah. yeah that's pretty awesome um what's it like to play such a complex character and try and make it not seem cliched I mean obviously uh David Foster Wallace's depression issues and whatnot have become very public over the years and whatnot and yet you don't want to make him just like oh he was that depressed guy who committed suicide like sure it's 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 a very serious element of what ultimately happened to him, but that is not what you want this to be, the remembrance of the character. This takes place, what, 12 years before yeah, that all occurred? Yeah, that, that's the advantage we have. Is it's not a cradle-to-grave biopic, and it focuses on four days and shines a magnifying glass on a very particular um, set of circumstances, but also the themes um, that we're exploring are different than depression. They are involved, but the theme that I think we're exploring is where we place our value. Um, and what happens, what is this terrifying moment when things go the way that you hoped they would go and you still feel the same? Yeah. What was it like in terms of this actually being based on a lot of taped conversations with David Foster Wallace? in terms of trying to like find that character for yourself instead of just you know literally standing on stage repeating verbatim what somebody sure. says and like be like this is a reenactment of exactly what occurred yeah. on this tape well the the thing is it, it is a four day interview that is pretty sprawling yeah. and what Donald Margulies has done so beautifully is created a narrative out of that so a lot of the conversations we have are in different contexts they're all the things they said but not necessarily when they said them mm. Um, or how they said them. So it really was a process of getting to know it so well that then you threw it away and were just in the moment. I used to hear that in acting class and not quite know what it meant. And I really understood yeah. on this. It's like know the material so well that now you're just hanging out with Jesse. Is, as an actor, you try and find... This project seems different because it's based on a real person, but as an actor, I always hear about people trying to find the character, trying to find yeah. the character. What was it like for you trying to find that character? I mean, I, I assume that like you had a picture in your mind of what this all would be like versus you know trying to literally transcribe who David Foster Wallace was or whatever like that. It seems like you want to sort of bring your own I don't know what experiences to that sort of like what is it sort of trying to create that composite of a character between what you might read from a script and like the actual perceptions of a guy or something like that. Well, I mean, I had literal photographs and which video. you do look remarkably like him. I will say well, that. Well, by the time we got there, uh, you know, we had gotten pretty close, and that's an amazing collaboration yeah. with a lot of people to make that happen. Um, so there is an element of, of making sure that you honor the fact that it's a real man with people who love him in varying capacities. But I also imagine you want to have something interesting where you're not literally just trying to reenact somebody's Well, there's no life. way to do that because um, you're just, you're you. And there are a lot of choices and speculation uh, to be made in going into and going into uh, addressing these themes. Like, I, I don't know what someone is thinking at a given time. And so I think that what I tried to do was focus on the parts of his writing that I really identified with on a really guttural level and build around those. Because David Foster Wallace, I think, to some extent, is operating from the premise that we are all the same. He's, he's taking a bet on that. 
Um, Seems to have paid off pretty well. Yeah, ultimately. but yeah, it took so him he, a while to get there. But yeah, totally. He's he's betting on the fact that people are going to um, identify with these very personal ideas, and so I took the same bet and figured, well, if I focus on the parts of us that are the same, and build around those, then I should end up in a, or about the right place emotionally. What was the most challenging aspect of making this film for you? I mean, there are any number of ones that I could see being really difficult yeah. as an actor, but what was it for you coming to this project? Was it the truncated timetable? Was it not getting a heck of a lot of time prior to meet and sort of work with Jesse? I think, like, it's, I think it's walking through your own fear. I think that that is the scariest, or that's the hardest thing about um, any artistic endeavor worth doing is walking through the fear of I'm going to give this my all and then I'm going to have to face the potential reality that I am not good enough. Yeah. That's the scariest part. But I write this uh, book series for kids called Nightmares where I say uh, that your nightmares are really the gateway to your dreams and unless you face your fears, you'll never reach your dreams. And at some point it occurred to me that uh, I can't tell that to a 10 year old <laughs> and then not do it myself. You know, it's, it's probably a good point to make. Yeah. Um, so the film is the end of the tour. Yeah. Um, in terms of you, do you have a Twitter or anything that you want people to follow to keep up to date with what you have going you know, on? Or is there anything else you want to let people to know to keep their eyes peeled for you? Uh, no, just if, uh, if, you, if this interests you, go see the end of the tour. And if that interests you, I hope you pick up some David Foster Wallace. Yeah. Definitely check out Jeff Who Lives at Home if you haven't yeah. seen that film. It's a great one. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for thank doing you. this. And it, I hope everyone goes and checks out the film. It's amazingly well done. Thanks a lot, man.